Welcome to More Than Mindset, the only podcast that bridges the gap between spirituality and success. Go beyond the mind with clarity and confidence coach Kim Guillory and learn how to integrate your passion to serve with your skills and experience to create a business you love. Let's get started. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the show. So this week, I am going to be talking about the cost of creativity. First, we're going to talk a little bit about what is creativity, how can you become more creative, and what are the risks of your creativity? Because those risks is what is potentially blocking you from being more creative. So first of all, I'm going to apologize. My voice is not fully back. Um, and you know my take on this. I really believe it's because I have pretty big plans for 2024 and have made some huge claims and investments that are leading into this next year. And I am answering the call, the nudge, the desire, and the wants of my heart and soul. I believe that our wants and desires are God expressing through us. And once I really started sitting with that, I kind of had to give up the BS around not following through, you know? There's something about, let me, let me ask you this. When you think about yourself and who you are in the world, your unique individual self, and you think about things maybe in your body or about yourself that are personal that you don't like or that you don't accept. Have you ever had that? Have you ever been that person where I wish my eyes wouldn't be this way or my body wouldn't be this way. For me, it's like, I hate the fact that my knees turn in. And this has been such a huge shame point for me, especially when I was younger. I was knock-kneed and pigeon-toed. And I just have such like leftover residue from that. And I had to come to the conclusion one day that there's not a damn thing I can do about this. It is what it is. And I am who I am. And I can continue to make a mockery or to reject what God created me to be, or I can accept it. And that is what I had to do. But when you accept it and you fully embody the essence of who you are, and you start making courageous steps of being seen, being heard, witnessed, whatever it is, there is a cost to that. And that cost is unease and discomfort and visibility. And that's what I'm talking about today with creativity. So I'm going to bridge both of those together. But first, I want you to consider, are you fully expressed as who you are? Are there parts of you that you are ashamed of or you try to hide because of people you hang around with or people who know you or things that you've heard other people say? Do you limit yourself because you judge and compare yourself? So that is the very first thing to recognize, understand, and come to amends with. I am not fully there, by the way. I still have a like a lot of leftover stuff that I wish I didn't. I, I wish I could dance and sing and love my body and express freely. And I'd be lying if I said I did, which is one of the main reasons that I invested in personal coaching this year at the capacity that I have. Because I know that I cannot create the impact that I want, the changes that I want, and I can't reach the number of people that I desire to reach if I continue carrying these limitations, these judgments. So for you, just leading into this episode and where I'm going with creativity, that is the first thing for you to answer because you are a creative expression. You just being in human form 
is creativity. It is a spiritual experience to be who you are in this body on planet Earth. So first, do a little assessment. How much do you accept or resist your body, your image, your expression, the way that you talk, the way that you look, the way that you think, things that you put out into the world? Do you have limitations? Do you have judgment? Do you have blocks? Or are you fully transparent and expressional to the degree of full exposure? Got it? Okay. So with that being said, are you expressing your wants and desires? Are you living a purpose-driven life? Are you creating something new in the world? Or are you expressing something that lights you up and something that you want to do, the impact that you want to have? And think about what you're doing with those around you. Are you giving them permission or are you telling them they should hide that or they shouldn't let people know or, um, you know, it's just not accepted anything like that, because that's where it starts from. It's in childhood that we are very often limited by our parents, by our environment, by our church, by society. We're told how to express and how not to express what's acceptable and not acceptable. And a lot of that is carried with us into our relationships, into our career, into adulthood. And so I'm making amends with that. I want to invite you to do the same so that's the first assessment is, do you fully accept who you are as an expressive divine being in this body, in this world? Who do you want to be and who are you and how are you expressing that or are you hiding it? The second thing is, what do you want to create? What is your purpose? What are you driven by? What do you want to bring to the world that has your unique spin on it. Maybe it's the language that you use or it's the vision that you carry. Maybe you have figured out something in your own unique way by contemplating on word. Like I love to break words down and have them mean something unique and different to me. Like I like to look them up. And I like to use them and do word plays on them. You probably already know that if you listen to the show. So that is part of my expressive, express of creative being. I use different words. I make up stuff. I use analogies that are different. And that is, in my belief, that is God expressing through me. Because that spiritual life, that part of us, it's in all of us. There's so much that we could be doing. There's so much bigness that we can share. There's so much fun to be had. But do you have the freedom to do it? Or do you feel oppressed or maybe tucked away, safe and locked down? Are you afraid to be different? Because that is the cost of creativity. People will say stuff. They just do. Whether you are unique or not, they will still say stuff because it's just humans and what they do. They are constantly, including me and you, we're constantly judging and comparing. Our brain wants to feel safe, not be too different. Let's be like everyone else so that we belong, so we don't get ridiculed, so we don't get judged, so that we're safely accepted. But that's not really living. That's like trying to make everyone fit into the brown m &Ms, right? Instead of being the rainbow, being the Skittles, being expressiveness. And coming back to the freedom to be creative, are you committed to expansion and growth. Like think about the full circle of your life. Are you getting the experiences that you want? 
Are you being the example that you choose to be? Are you earning the money? Do you believe that you can have it all? Do you want to creatively bring something new to the world, something that hasn't been here before, but you're afraid to be judged because no one else is doing it, because it's going to be different, because it's going to take too much courage? Or are you one of those who are just putting out everything that comes through you? I'm really curious about this. I have a lot of creative ideas and probably 50% of the time, I doubt. Because I think if it's so brilliant, someone else would have already done it. Oh, that's just going to make me weird. Ah, oh, It's going to call too much attention. Right? Have you ever thought that? Like, I just figured out something that I was not taught, but I learned. And I look around and no one else is doing it. So I don't express it. I don't share it. Because I don't want to be made a fool because of it. I don't want anyone pointing a finger or laughing at me or saying that I'm crazy or weird. Is that you? Or do you make up words and create ideas and put it out there and see what it does? Because I do that very often, but I'm telling you, 50% of the time, there are thoughts going on in my mind that says I should not, including this, this show, this podcast. Every week, this thing in the back of my head tells me I shouldn't do this. I, Who are you to say that or to tell other people that, right? It's not just saying it because it's coming from me, but it's actually like almost suggesting that other people go and try it. Like, that's bad. You're going to be ridiculed. You're going to make a fool out of yourself. You're not so important. You can't inspire anyone. That's just weird stuff. No one's going to understand you. These thoughts are constantly in the back of my head. So I'm going to ask you, what do you want to create and put out into the world that is a divine expression of you, but those thoughts are stopping you from taking action? And are you willing to investigate, to explore, to get curious so that maybe you can detect what these limitations are and you can allow God to express through you. To be an expressive being, to be a creative being, to be interesting. Or do you just want to be safe and normal and quiet? And that might work for you. It doesn't work for me, by the way. So that's what I got. I am being expressive and being creative, and I am committed to taking it to the market. I came up with it in my body, mind, and soul. It's something that I heard while I was in a class. I started taking notes. I started writing it down. I nurtured it just like you would an infant. So I just kept imagining, and I visualized, and I started thinking about those who were going to be excited and grateful and inspired by this body of work. And I've just been sitting with it for about six months and I talk about it and now I'm putting colors to it and we're starting to brand it. I'm starting to talk about it and hopefully it will get to the market and it will express in a way that pings other people's creativity that it will inspire or motivate or give them courage. So sounds like it's a lot of woo stuff coming at you this week, and that's okay. I'm still feeling a little not my whole self. I'm a little stopped up. My throat's still a little sore. It comes and goes. My voice is there, then it's not there. But I am still expressing. I am still creating. I'm still in the game. I'm not letting it win. I know this is resistance. For any of you who understand the mind-body connection or disconnection, when we do something daring and scary and courageous, and it's not something that has been done before, we haven't seen it be successful, and we are willing to take the steps and take the actions to bring it out into the world and to be exposed to possibly 
making a fool out of ourself. The brain creates this resistance in the body to slow us down, to shut us down, to like, hey, you need to be quiet. Don't be talking about that. You're going to make a fool out of yourself. You better hide. You better get quiet. And I'm not doing it. If you remember when I first started the podcast, I talked about having a sciatica issue. It's kind of the same thing. It's just that this time it's expressing or it's contracting somewhere else. And that's exactly what's happening. We are either expanding. So expanding is the expressing and doing big, bold things, or we are contracting, which is bringing that divine energy down and in and then holding it. It's almost like giving yourself this big old hug and you're just going to keep it to yourself. Let me, let me not let anybody else know about it. Let me not put it out there. I'm just going to dream about it. And then it's going to just dissolve and go away. Is that you? <laughs> it has been me in the past, by the way. I have had moments where I've done that typically after I've had some sort of failure. And then I kind of just go through this safety mode. So it's kind of where I'm at now that all of this is happening. I recognize it. I'm not resisting it. I'm allowing it to come up. I'm allowing it to express in a way that is not pleasant. And I just keep taking action. I keep nourishing the vision. I keep talking about it to my clients. I keep talking about it to the team. And I write, I draw, I visualize, I do contemplations on it. I imagine what it'll be like in three years and five years. I imagine the the benefits that my clients will receive from it. And I've already started like some of the calls and it is it doesn't feel like it's flowing yet. It feels a little awkward. I'm trying to figure out where everyone is and like how fast I can move through this or if I need to slow down. And so I've got this um, dynamic thing going on to where part of me is going, wants to go really, really fast and hurry up and give the benefits and the results. And then another part of me wants to just be the whole way through. Like I want to slow it down. I want to make sure that everyone is getting it. And I want to move through it with intention. And then boom, there goes my mind. You better hurry up. You better get results. No one's going to believe you. If they don't get it now, you're not going to be able to ever keep it going. You're not going to be able to stay in the game. Like I'm like, okay. 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 It's almost like a multiple personality that's going on, right? We call this dissonance in the coaching world. It's when there is a part or an aspect of you that wants one thing. And then there's another part that wants another thing. So there's the part that wants to be creative and express and go out and do something different. And there's another part that just wants it to be boring and settled and safe. So the mind can't hold conflicting beliefs. So it can't hold both of those at the same time. And so that's the, the dynamic like traction that's happening that I'm calling resistance that's in my body that's showing up as physical manifestation. So it is a physical materializing it's showing up. You know how I say your beliefs are going to show up in your body, your bedroom, and your bank account? This is showing up in my body. What you believe, what you your belief system is bringing to the market, and then what your dreams are bringing to the market or your vision don't match. And so in between there is some friction, some pulling, some pushing and pulling, and it shows up as chronic pain, illness, and disease. It shows up sometimes as a skin rash or like I have my back locked up this morning, the low back that's feeling unsafe and insecure. It's like, oh, I don't know. Not so sure about this. I don't feel so safe, right? It'll show up in your relationships. It'll show up in your business. Sometimes it's like I've got to you know, carry it in my shoulders, in my neck, because I'm really concerned about what other people think. Um, oftentimes it's in our feet and, and our ankles and it's that fear of moving forward. What if I can't do it? I don't know if I can support myself. And so it shows up in different areas of the body. 
And you don't become a victim of it. You just get the awareness, you recognize it, and you watch it play out. And eventually it's not even uncomfortable anymore, to be honest. It's a little uncomfortable right now because I feel stuffy and my, my throat comes and goes. But for the most part, this is probably the easiest transition of transformation that I have had yet in all of these years. So I want to encourage you to be creative and to know that it comes with a cost and that cost is discomfort. This cost might be being ridiculed or made fun of or people talking about you. It's really not that big a deal. They are just expressing what their fear is. It's just what we do. We're always projecting and reflecting. We're always doing that to each other. It's actually not personal. I am more afraid of dying a bored soul than I am a creative free spirit. How about you? Do you want to be a creative free spirit and allow God to express and to move through you? Because I'm like, it's kind of what it feels like. Or do I want to stay home, take care of the garden, have an easy life, not push myself? I'm like instantly I thought I am just going to be like big like the house because I will be so bored that all my bad habits will return. <laughs> that's the first thing that popped into my head. So that's it. There is a cost to creativity and there is also a cost to stifling that creativity. Which one are you going to choose? Are you going to be daring and courageous and you're going to be willing to express yourself differently through whatever you're creating? Or are you going to be safe? And then what is that costing you? Because that cost is way scarier to me than having to worry about what anyone else says. Because the truth is, at the end of the day, what you think about yourself is more important. All right, my friends. Have a great week. Continue to follow. Listen. Give me a rating and review. Share it with friends. Help us get it into the hands of more people. And... Keep listening for the announcement for the rebrand so you can check out what we have going on. Thanks for listening to this episode of More Than Mindset. 